Hi, this is Lucien, DH7LM, and welcome back to Ham Radio Soul. If you have a Titera or TYT 380 or 390, there's really no reason at all why you shouldn't do what I'm just going to show you, which is a firmware update. Because the cool thing about it is that afterwards you will see call signs and names from your QSO partners, especially if you are on the Brandmeister DMR network, right? So it's a really neat feature. And the other pretty cool thing about it is that you can set it up, which is called promiscuous mode, which means that you won't have to worry about any RX lists anymore. You will just hear all the activity that is on your local repeater or whatever you are using uh, without uh, having this annoying effect that you see that the thing receives something but you can't hear anything because uh, you don't have uh, set up the right RX list uh, which can be pretty annoying so the other thing is uh, that you can uh, manually change the talk groups if you are on a certain frequency so the whole thing makes the DMR experience really so much better and uh, it makes it really suitable for ham radio. So how to get started? It's very, very easy. So let's have a look. Um, you just need uh, to go to this website here, uh, which is called uh, miklaw.com slash DMR slash blah, blah, blah. I put a link in the show notes. And once you're there, you see that they have uh, compiled uh, quite a few resources and it's not only about uh, the TYT uh, MD380 or MD390, there are also other brands as you can see um, for which they have links for. So that's pretty neat. Um, and uh, what you need for the MD380 or 390 is uh, or for the anytone or whatever is these database tools right um, because then it brings you to the brandmeister website which is uh, pretty cool um, and you can see the url here there it is and i put another link in the show notes anyway um and here you have uh, the tool that you need and uh, you just need to look which one it is and you can see here Titera Flash Tool 2.0 that's the right one and if you scroll down a little bit you can see there is from their descriptions it's for the Titera MD380 and MD390 and uh, it says that uh, this program can be used to basically do what we want to do, which is um, first of all, flash the um, firmware of the radio. And second of all, it can also um, put the user database from the Brandmeister network in there, which is actually one of the neatest features because then you always see the name and the location of your QSO partner. That's so much better for the whole DMR experience. Anyway, so what you then do is you download this little tool, which is really, really easy and straightforward. Um, I have already done this. The only caveat uh, for Windows users is that, excuse me, just get the zoom straight, is that it comes, as you can see here in my folder, it comes as a raw file you can see that here titeria flash tool dot raw which uh, you maybe need uh, an, uh, some kind of a zip program f uh, for it to unpack it i'm not sure if windows can do that natively but i use a uh, 7-zip it's freeware and it works amazing so once you have unpacked it, you will find a folder which is called just the same Titera Flash Tool KD4Z. By the way, uh, thank you a lot, uh, KD4Z. And I'm not sure, I think there was a, um, a German guy who did the original uh, firmware um, 
reverse engineering and then other people took it from there but i'm not sure how the history uh, was but uh thanks a lot guys um that's really awesome so once you are in that folder you can see here's the titira flash tool.exe so you can just click it you don't have to install anything which is also i always like very much you don't have to put too much ham radio crap on your computer <laughs> so and then this uh, neat little window will show up um yeah so how does it work so, so the first thing you need to know is uh, that for to in order to flash your little radio here you need to put it in the right mode which you do by holding this little button and the ptt pressed you see that these two right and you hold them and then you turn on the radio So what you see is that the little light on the radio is uh, flashing and uh, changing between green and red. So now we are in the right mode. Then you connect your programming cable, which of course you before that uh, you put um, into your computer on a USB port. So with the MD 390 you need to screw unscrew the cover here with the MD380 I think it uh, is it's not necessary you can access the the jacks more easily so anyway you connect the cable like that and it's still in this programming mode right in this firmware flash mode so then you click here on the little flashing tool. You click on either download no GPS firmware or download GPS firmware, right? Um, depending on your radio. If you have an MD380 with the GPS, then you need obviously to download the, the GPS version. And if it's uh, without, then no GPS and it works again for the 380 and the 390. So since I don't have GPS, um, I will download the no GPS version. So I click here and it says in uh, a language that I don't understand. <laughs> um, it uh, says that it has uh, completed the download and uh, that I should press flash to flash it see i i understand it <laughs> so this area here is for the firmware here you can flash from a file but we need the regular flash button this area is for the user database which we will do afterwards so we press flash boom The radio doesn't show anything except uh, the light is still blinking. So it shows the progress. And by the way, it's really important that you don't uh, switch it off while flashing the firmware, right? Okay, so it says all done. Perfect. So I can just switch off the radio like that. And let me see. If I switch it back on, what happens? Boom. Now you can see it all worked. The firmware is there. Anyway, now uh, once the firmware is there, we can do the user database update, which is uh, really one of the key features of this whole thing, right? So what you do is uh, you click on download user database and then you click on flash user database. Yes, it's pretty straightforward. Download and then flash. And this actually might take some time. And once you click it, you can see 
the radio goes into PC program USB mode because right now we are not in the firmware update mode, right? We are in the regular, uh, the, the radio is just regularly switched on because for the user database update, we don't need to be in firmware update mode. So we don't need to press these two guys here. We just switch it on regularly. By the way, I'm not entirely sure how the those guys who wrote this firmware and all of that, how they managed to get the, all these contacts on there. So maybe that would be interesting to find out how they did it because it's really ingenious, I think. It's really awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. Yay, boom. There we go. Ah, still more waiting. I'm sorry. So again, uh, while these things are running, please don't switch off the radio. It, I'm not sure if it's that bad with the user database, but uh, I've heard stories or I've read stories that uh, people turned their Titira radios into like useless bricks <laughs> while doing that. So, so be a bit careful. And of course, uh, no warranty or anything. So if you break your radio, it's not on me, but it's really worth it. So I would definitely give it a try and you can see how totally easy it is, right? It's just, uh, they really did an awesome job, these people. Okay, so it's done. I can safely exit the program like this. And now I can just turn the radio off, powering down, disconnect the programming cable. And there we are. We have the super duper MD390 or MD380 with the new firmware. If you want to check, by the way, whether the firmware is there, click menu, go right to the bottom and you can see there's a, a menu item called utilities, press it and at the bottom there is the new item MD3 80 tools and here you have all the nice settings for example you can do all kinds of stuff with a display which is really cool you can uh, even change uh, your DMR ID should you need that but uh, you can set talk group for set a talk group for the channel which is really cool uh, so you can just enter uh, the number of your favorite talk group on a specific channel and uh, go ahead it's really nice and uh, there are other features that you can explore which are really cool and you also can get rid of this annoying Roger beep which is also very nice. But as I said, the, the coolest feature I find is the promiscuous mode. Let's go back to the menu and to the tools setting. I'm sorry, the camera doesn't really seem to focus all that well. So let's go there and you can see under DMR setup, you have this guy promiscuous ah there we go so you click that and it should be enabled but you can check whether it's enabled confirm boom and this means you will hear everything that's going on on the dmr frequency no matter which RX talk groups you have set. And it's even cooler than that because uh, once uh, you hear someone on a specific talk group, um, then if you put push the PTT, the radio remembers it and talks back on this talk group that it just heard. So you can always join a QSO no matter your settings, which is really neat. So basically you don't, you only need two channels for for a repeater, let's say, 
one for time slot one and one for time slot two. And uh, you will basically hear everything that's going on and you can talk to the guys. However, if you want to make a call to a certain talk group, let's say a certain country or something, then of course you need to, um, or it might be a good idea to put that talk group in there, especially if it's a static talk group that is on the switched on on the repeater all the time. So that's still a good idea. But you can also uh, use the the set talk group feature in the menu that I just showed you. So you can just set the talk group manually, although it might be a bit annoying, but it's possible. So that's really, really nice. So to show you how that look like in receive, uh, I hope that there is something going on on the frequency, but let me just show you. Maybe as you can see, you will see the name and the QTH of your QSO partner. So what you see in the display now is um, a local repeater called Feldberg and it is on uh, time slot 2 and talk group 9 which is the default setting for this channel. As I said I can easily like uh, uh, change it with this new uh, firmware but uh, I have it there and I just dynamically uh, put the, uh, the US uh, talk group on there for this uh, demonstration. So that's no problem. Otherwise, it's, it's a local channel. So that was that. As I said, I can highly recommend this little tweak uh, to every owner of a Titira radio. It's just uh, so much better. So I wish you success and don't break your radio and uh, best of luck in 73s. See you next time. Bye bye.